Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of October 29, 2023. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. It is a remarkable astrological week, without a doubt. Big moves happening in the sky now. Boy, is this a very special time. I do think that in some ways, what is transpiring now reflects and continues to unfold the events of last week. And so last week, much of the characteristic of the time was this sense of moving towards a eclipse, a lunar eclipse in particular that we ended last week with. And so we're coming into this week with the energy represented there, which is a lot of emotion, a desire for change, a desire for things to feel different. And in some ways they do, though not always the way that we like or the way that we hoped. There's a sense of being on opposite ends, sometimes within ourselves in terms of what it is that we want. And sometimes it can feel like those voices, those pressures, those expectations come from outside of us. Sigmund Freud is often considered the godfather of psychiatry and psychology. Now, a lot of his ideas have now, all these years later, been debunked uh, or built on so much that they've become something else. Um, But for his time, he did have very valuable insights, theories, ideas um, that really helped us to understand the complexity of the psyche in new ways and in different ways. And so that is a big part of his contribution. Now, it was Freud who believed that the psyche itself is divided into different parts, if you will. And so one part is what he called the id. And the id is this more hedonistic or impulsive side of us, uh, stimuli, and we respond. There's no filter there with the it, and that includes with whatever it is that our human desires might be. We're thinking only of ourselves in this part of our psyche. And then we also have the superego, and the superego is sort of our higher morality, um, the voice of the parent inside of us that tells us what's right and wrong. And then we have the ego, which is uh, sort of a, a force that helps to create a balance between these two energies. Well, if you think about the energy last week, we had, under the light of this eclipse, Mars opposite Jupiter. And I think of Mars as powerfully representing the id impulse in us, that sense of whatever happens, we are ready to be impulsive, we are ready to react, We are ready to go with whatever it is that we desire and just follow it through with our action. But then we also have Jupiter, and Jupiter is that sense of ethics and what's right and what's wrong. Some of those attributes are also aligned with Saturn in many ways as well, whereas Jupiter is the more lofty sense, right? The more idealistic sense of right and wrong. Saturn is the structures that help keep it all together so that we actually align with a sense of some order. Now, we had that opposition powerfully represented between these two forces of the id and the superego. But we had that lunar eclipse as well. And that lunar eclipse, although it was magnifying the energy of Jupiter because it was so close in the sky to Jupiter, What we also saw was this sense of emotional truth uh, coming forward. We saw Mars and Mercury opposite that eclipse. And Mercury, of course, is mind. It's rationality. It's how we make sense of things. And so you can see that in many ways, so many of us were really asking ourselves, what do we really feel? What do we really want? What do we want to do? What do we think is right And what is our role within that? How do we move towards that? Um, We're coming into this week with that energy. And in many ways, I think we're going to continue to expand on that. However, the, the heaviness of structure, the heaviness of reality, I have to say, very likely is going to feel like it builds more and more as we navigate this time. 
Now, Saturn has been retrograde since mid-June. And what that means is, as we get to the end of this week, we've stepped into a brand new month by then. It will have been almost five months of Saturn being retro. That is about how long Saturn does retro every year. And whenever a planet goes retro, its energies turn within. It invites us to look at where it is that we need to own this energy. If Saturn is structure and realities, it is Saturn retrograde that invites us to look at where we've accepted certain structures, what it is we really feel about what structures add or don't add, what new structures do we feel we want to build in our lives. But more than anything, Saturn represents reality, seeing things as they actually are. Jupiter, in contrast, very idealistic, but Saturn says, admit the truth. Look at what's really being shown to you, and perhaps importantly, look at what you are demonstrating. Look at who you are. What is the evidence showing you? It's one thing to believe, and that's a wonderful thing. It's one thing to say, I'm this kind of person, I'm this kind of person, but it's a whole other thing when you really examine your actions and how sometimes they can very much be at odds with who it is that you believe yourself to be. And I feel like this is going to be one of the key characteristics of this awakening that is set to take place for a lot of us out there. We call ourselves on our stuff, on our crap. Where it is that we've been saying things are one way, it's like we can't help but really admit the truth to ourselves now. And this is part of why Saturn is considered a reality check moment. Considering what's happening around Saturn direct, well, chances are it is going to be quite dramatic. The key characteristic of this time isn't so much the celestial connections taking place, there are plenty, but that overwhelmingly, the dominant conversation now is what astrologers call an opposition. And that is when planets stand across each other in the sky. And we've got these big planets, Jupiter and Uranus, in the sign of Taurus, in an Earth sign having to do with what's happening here on Earth, and again, paying attention to what's manifested. But both Jupiter and Uranus, by their very nature, are not inclined towards caring so much about how things actually are. They're motivated and driven in different ways. Jupiter, as we mentioned, is about the ideals, right? The morality of a given moment, of a given situation our own personal moralities as well, the ethics that guide our life. And Uranus is pure thought. It's an energy of seeing things in ways that perhaps were not conceptualized before. It is the energy of revolution and breaking free from the past. Saturn is considered time. Uh, the father of time, for example, is one nickname of Saturn, especially in Roman times. But that is because of the association of Saturn with tradition as well, the way that things have always been. And so we've got these big planets, Jupiter and Uranus, uh, in an Earth sign trying to change our reality. And then we've got planets moving through Scorpio. Mainly the planets moving through Scorpio, we're looking at Mercury, Mars, and the Sun. Recently, these planets moved into this part of the sky. And as I said, a key characteristic last week was under the light of the lunar eclipse. We had that opposition of Mars and Jupiter. Well, as we enter this week and Mercury, the Sun and Mars are together, although they continue to create space more and more as they navigate this time, uh, we are going to start the week right out of the gate with Mercury opposite Jupiter. On Friday, we get the Sun opposite Jupiter. But it is at the very end of the week that this key characteristic of this time, oppositions, are going to really kick into high gear. Under the light of Saturn direct, Venus will be opposite Neptune, and Mercury will be opposite Uranus. These are very different energies, but speaking in the same way. Um, 
as much as oppositions can denote a need for balance and diplomacy, it's also an energy of extremes. And I do want to be uh, straightforward. This can be a, a push and pull. This can be tension that may not necessarily feel resolved and may feel as if one side is holding a whole lot more power than another side, particularly at key moments. And accepting the power imbalance is part of the reality of the situation. We may have to look at much more practically. Neptune has been conceptualized as the higher vibration of Venus, where Venus is about what is beautiful and gracious and kind. It is Neptune that turns that up and looks at universal love, universal beauty. It looks at the dissolving of our standards of beauty so that we're able to recognize it all around us. But an opposition like this is uh, also one of the characteristics is disappointment or wasted energy in some way. It's pouring a whole lot of ourselves in a given direction and not necessarily feeling like that cup is being filled. Uh, wasting of resources as well can happen at this time. Um, being frivolous and that be part of the waste is also part of this time as well. But then we also have an energy that is so much in contrast to this, which is Mercury opposite Uranus. And this is where the oppositions to Uranus begin. As we navigate forward, we're going to get the Sun opposite Uranus, Mars opposite Uranus. I'll be here to talk about it every step of the way as we navigate further into November. So these planets in Scorpio begin their oppositions to Uranus at the end of this week. And that is such a contrast, given that Neptune is about the dream and you don't really know what's real. Uranus is revealing in an instant. It is as honest as thunder. If you think about it, how many movies have we seen where it's raining and it's all dark on the screen and then you get some thunder and flashes of what's really going on, right? What is really behind the shadows? Well, that's what we see here. Uranus has often been conceptualized as the higher vibration of Mercury. And so you can see here, it's almost as if we are trying to, as a collective, break free of past notions and conceptions. We're trying to evolve towards something else, something more, where there's love and ease and grace and softness. We're trying to have that love reach the masses. We're going for something universal, a love that we all can feel. Where it is that information is coming forward, we're looking at it, we're longing for something that feels more honest, glimpses into truth that can really change things very dramatically and very quickly. However, the signs we have to talk about once again. We get planets in Scorpio right now. And Scorpio has this range of energy. I recently did this um, Instagram Live with my friend Maria Blaquier. And Maria is coming to Synchronicity University, uh, teaching a class on draconic astrology, as I call it, the dragon's astrology. I'll talk about that a little bit later. But I would invite you to go and see that live because she's talking in that live about the eclipse that we have at the end of last week, uh, about Scorpio energy in particular, and that spectrum of Scorpio energy, how it can manifest. One of the ways that it can manifest, of course, is transformation, truth, um, understanding how to change and heal things from the inside out to really turn it over in some way. But the other side of the spectrum of expression that is Scorpio is manipulative right? It can be deliberately, uh, profoundly cruel as well. Given that Mercury is here, I think it's almost like I'm seeing a sense of people feeling manipulated because Mercury is what we're talking about as a collective. The information that we're getting feels manipulative, but then we've also got these flashes of truth that are very undeniable in some way as well. 
So in the midst of all these oppositions, right, all these energies that can feel rather heavy, I think there's this brief glimmer of some hope, some breakthrough, some sense that things could change and align us with a better reality. And that comes on Tuesday when Venus trines Uranus. Now, more personally, this is one of my favorite energies, I have to say. It's like love in some ways surprises, desire surprises. So whether it is that you are open to romantic love or you just want to spend time with family or friends uh, or just, you know, go out and try a different hairstyle. You, you know me, I like to say it's just hair. Have at it. There are times when you really don't want to do that. This is a time when chances are you'll really like the results even more. So I do really love this energy in so many ways. It's light, it's fun, and it expands our hearts in ways that we hadn't anticipated. And so we have these oppositions surrounding this trine, right? And the oppositions are all about, oh, going back and forth and feeling this tension in the air, feeling a heaviness grow. And then there's that glimmer of hope of possibility that things could change really quickly, um, that we might recognize our own beauty and celebrate our own beauty and those of others as well. Before things really start to go in a direction where it feels um, more uncertain. And I'm so sorry to say it does happen. And especially right now with all the really heavy things happening in the collective um, and in the world, really heartbreaking things right now. And I know so many of us are feeling it. I think that that very heaviness and that very tension um, is part of how this energy is going to manifest for a lot of us out there. What power do we actually have? I think by the time we get to the end of the week and Saturn begins to shift directions with Saturn standing still in the sky all week, I think that is going to be a big question for a lot of us. And some of us may feel truly powerless, which is part of what Saturn sometimes needs us to understand, that our only power really is surrender. And others may feel uh, more emboldened by practical shifts that we're seeing take place. But nothing is clear. That's the thing. Just when you think we know what's really going on, what's really happening, um, I think that there's going to be these flashes and this sense of, okay, this is the truth. Well, no, that's not really it. And uh, we don't know anything. And that here, actually, we know this. And it's that kind of energy that becomes very pervasive under the light of Saturn going direct. But it's about the evidence, ultimately, that we may want to look at. Now, more personally, of course, the evidence is our own lives. What is the truth of the situation that we are in? And how do we feel about it? Is it working for us or not? Is it that we have spent a lot of time trying to make a certain situation one way, and now we're realizing that maybe it's futile? And that could be a love-related situation or in some other area of life as well. But I think that this sense that things have got to change, but they can only change if we admit the truth to ourselves um, is going to be a key feeling that a lot of us are having as we move towards the end of the week. I'm going to invite you to be very kind and gentle to yourself and to others uh, at this time. There's a lot of pressure. Make no mistake that that sense of a, a heaviness in the air that we can feel, it's going to be up to us, especially individually, and uh, to reach out to the people we care about to say, okay, how can I do something that brings lightness into a moment that maybe feels like we just don't know where that is? That lightness can come out of nowhere and in an instant can help us to feel like we're able to manifest something better, something different as a result. Now, before we move to the wrap up of this video, let me say, you know, I love mythology, right? I love talking about mythology. In fact, one of my books, uh, which is called Prayers to the Sky, um, this is really a collection of origin myths of the different planets, the major planets, uh, and it has different uh, traditional and my own uh, prayers, orations, affirmations, meditations around 
um, the different planets. And I think of it as astrological magic light is how I, I see this. A great introductory book for those who maybe might go on to really study astrological magic in a more serious way. And so, you know, I love myth and I really want to share a myth with you that I know I have before a key characteristic of Saturn. And I think this exemplifies Saturn's energy so much. Um, Saturn was given a prophecy that said one of his sons would go on to uh, topple him and become a greater God than he ever was. And so Saturn freaks out when he hears this. And he decides to go consume his children, right? So he eats, he consumes Neptune. He consumes Pluto. When his wife, Rhea, sees what he's doing, she's like, oh my God, I can't let him do this. And so what she does is she wraps up a rock. And this is baby Jupiter. She tells him this is baby Jupiter because Jupiter is a baby at this point. And he consumes it. So he has something to do. He thinks he has Jupiter safely within. None of these kids are going to get out and topple him. But actually, Jupiter goes off to live in the villages, uh, raised with the uh, constant knowledge, the constant affirmation that his destiny is to topple his dad. Um, that he's going to go back and he's going to be the greatest of all kings. And that's what ends up happening. Uh, he slices open Saturn's stomach and out pop his siblings as well. So all is well. Zeus becomes king of the gods. To me, this story exemplifies a few, many, I would say, key things. But for this video, uh, I want to talk about how this exemplifies fear, right? The fear of losing power. And so what does Saturn do? He does perhaps the most violent thing you could do to your child, right? Which is erase them. Say, oh no, I'm taking you back. You go back where you came from. You came from my loins. Well, I can't put you back in my loins. So I'm going to put you in my stomach. So there's that desire to erase one's children because of fear. That is how profound and pervasive his fear is that he doesn't stop for a moment and say, hey, this is my kid. What the hell am I doing here? He doesn't have that moment of realization because he wants things to be the way they've always been. He wants to maintain the structure, especially because he benefits from that structure. He, at this point, is the most powerful of gods. He's enjoying that power. He doesn't want to lose that power. And he would do anything to keep it, so much so that he actually does this thing that is perhaps the, the most awful thing that a person can actually do. But for all that, you can't prevent progress. You can't prevent things from changing, no matter how much you want to. You can maybe tell yourself that, oh, okay, I got out of the way of that one. Or you could tell yourself that it's suppressed for now, it's contained for now. And sure, you might think the illusion of that is there, but... When the time has come for things to become something else, even if we don't recognize that actually they're becoming something more, when we can't embrace that, whatever the structure is, whatever the reality is now, that doesn't mean it's always going to be that way. And that really is okay. The structures can change. The reality can change. New traditions can be created when we don't accept that. That is when we create pain for ourselves and for others. If we were to interpret these stories in a more modern context, wow, imagine all the therapy that Neptune and Pluto uh, have to go through. Uh, I know a lot of people out there come to astrology because of a Pluto transit. Uh, that is the big one that I've seen, sometimes a Saturn transit as well. Neptune transits is usually after it's over that you realize like, Oh my God, that was taking place and I didn't even realize it. But these are the transits that bring people to therapy. <laughs> Neptune and Pluto, very likely because of their dad, ended up needing a whole lot of therapy uh, to continue to be productive and move through the world. Because as we know, in some of those myths, they were uh, not very conscious and evolved beings, even though they were considered among the great ancient gods. What I love about this week for us, there's so much here. It's a powerful and meaningful astrological moment. 
I am going to say, look, the sweet spot this week is Venus trine Uranus. And so have fun, have at it. It it can have a, a little bit of a break to it that gives us this different perspective more universally with Venus in the sign of Virgo. It's about how things in very practical and real ways can be different from that place of heart, right? Receiving the energy of things changing and and lightening up very quickly thanks to that Uranus trine. And we want to cherish these moments of hope because hope is never wasted, ever. We have the real promise and potential and excitement to look forward to, especially in that first part of the week. But at the same time, very likely, a lot of us are going to be having to look at things more honestly, more realistically, more practically. But that also means that we could make real and practical gains. I don't think Saturn is bad. In fact, when I think back to my life, and maybe you can tell me in the comments below if you know when you went through important Saturn transits, they really help us to manifest something else, something that feels uh, stronger, that is rooted in us being honest with ourselves, even when it's hard. And I think that's part of why Saturn has to do with success. It has to do with self-respect. Because once you know the truth, it's like you can't go back. Once you've done the work, you can't go back. That doesn't mean that they're not going to be moments that feel uncertain. It means that all the work that we do to make ourselves more stable, more strong, more secure, helps us to cultivate meaningful maturity. And it is that maturity that can be a game changer especially in light of how it fuels healthy self-respect from which a flourishing life can emerge. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys. And to prove it to you, here are some of my most recent favorite comments. Thank you to everybody who likes, who comments, who subscribes, who shares, who thumbs up. All of it means so much. I'm so grateful for you. Thank you. And of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShawSuperstars.com where you get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week for each and every sign for as low as just $3 a month with Choose Your Membership Rate. Higher tiers get you things like all access passes to Synchronicity University events, consultations with me, and so much more. All of this in the superstar space at NadiaShawSuperstars.com. Links are in the description below. Synchronicity University has some incredible programs that are starting this week. Yes, this week we have our November program starting. And you've got just three days left as we start this week to choose your tuition rate. As always, just $5 a class. This is not the time to delay. We are down to the wire. This is where you want to go on to synchronicityuniversity.com and register for classes with these incredible, brilliant astrologers. Um, And their trust means so much to me for them to be coming to Synchronicity University. Wow, I can't wait to celebrate them with you. Uh, I'm going to start with my friend Yuridia Robles. Now, Yuridia and I co-wrote a book called Mayan Astrology. Uh, It's her wisdom as one of the leading Mayan uh, scholars in the world, Um, but I kind of put it into my own words. It's based on us going back and forth over a period of months, and that was so much fun to write with her. She's such a brilliant astrologer. Well, now she's bringing a class on Mayan astrology to Synchronicity University. Now, this class uh, does touch on the things that are talked about in the book, but builds on them profoundly. So really, it's just one class where we explore signs, for example. But then in future classes, she talks about things like planets and aspects and really helps you to see the sky so differently from that indigenous American perspective. This is set to be a profound experience for those of you who really do want to connect to the wisdom of the earth, of the Americas, and so much more, Mayan wisdom as well. And Yuridia is the perfect person to be teaching this. She is somebody I consider my astrologer. She is so brilliant. Uh, and she is going to bring that brilliance, as you will very obviously see, in her class. So you've got about three days left as you start this week. 
to choose your tuition rate as long as just $5 a class. Don't miss UDD at Robles at synchronicityuniversity.com. Links are in the description below. Synchronicity University presents someone I mentioned earlier, Maria Blackier, and she is bringing an incredible course to Synchronicity University on Draconic Astrology. This is a completely different way to see the sky, to understand the sky. This is a way that helps you to put the nodes first. It is calculating the planets very differently and it will change your astrology game. Maria did a reading for me, a draconic astrology reading for me more personally off camera and I was just blown away because the chart, normal natal chart shows us what we want, why we want it and how we go about getting it. But draconic astrology is about the karmic stuff that just shows up that we are uh, meant to do, that is promised to us in this lifetime that we promised ourselves we would do. And it is incredible how valuable this is where it comes to prediction, where it comes to speaking truth to the client. It really cuts through so much. Um, I cannot recommend uh, Maria and especially Draconic Astrology enough. So you can learn a whole lot more by my interview with her. Also, uh, of course, at SynchronicityUniversity.com. Three days left as we start this week to choose your tuition rate. As always, just $5 a class, an unheard of rate to learn from Maria Blaquier. This is the only place she's going to be teaching at that rate. I hope that you will join us. Links are in the description below. Synchronicity University presents my friend, the one and only Mark Lawrenson, one of our most popular teachers, is back at Synchronicity University, this time with another soul mission guided course. And this is forecasting from a soul mission perspective. Anyone I've talked to who's taken Mark's class has said that they felt it was a a life-changing experience. It was an experience that helped them to understand and see so differently their chart, what was happening, because it comes down to interpreting from the soul mission perspective. He shifts hearts when he teaches astrology and helps you to bring heart to your astrological interpretation. So yeah, forecasting, what is that? Prediction, that's a part of our tradition. And so he's going to be doing that and bringing so many different techniques over the course of five weeks so that you can see the soul lesson playing out here at a given time. So I hope that you will join us. Uh, once again, Mark Lawrence, super popular teacher at synchronicityuniversity.com. You've got three days left to choose your tuition rate. As always, just $5 a class. Links are in the description below. Now, both Mark and Yuridia have taught courses at Synchronicity University before. And if you missed those courses for a very limited time, you can actually add on these previous courses when you sign up for their classes uh, at that very low $5 a class. Choose your tuition rate. So these are instant downloads that you're going to be getting of these incredible programs uh, that they have previously taught. And of course, also sign up for their upcoming classes as well. Join us live or everybody who joins gets the download as well. And as part of the jam packed synchronicity November 2023 term, well, we've got four classes this time. Normally we have three classes, three days a week, five weeks this time, four, just so you can get even more astrology in there and learn from the best. And the speaker series, the November 2023 speaker series is coming to Synchronicity University with five incredible teachers, some very new and some favorites returning as well. And so we have Mark McGowan. Uh, Mark is someone who has appeared on Black Ink VH1. So he's got this charisma. He's been on television and he's a medium. And so he's going to help us to understand um, what shadows might be playing out in the chart, the dark side that maybe we don't want to look at that needs to heal. And he'll bring this sense of blending mediumship and astrology that I think is going to be really valuable uh, and is going to end up being meaningful to so many people out there. Returning favorites include April Cosmic Homegirl. You know, I love April so much. Um, she's often on this channel and she's going to be looking at the ascendant 
in the astrology chart. And we also have Akila Moon. Now, Akila, again, she's back. And she loves talking about Venus. Um, this time, she's doing Venus and Black Moon Lilith, understanding the relationship between them and how they speak through your chart. We have Preeti Insight. Now, she's a intuitive tarot reader, and she's going to be helping to introduce you to an intuitive approach to tarot reading. And Angeles Lopez, she too is coming for the first time and is going to be teaching on Time Lord period. So this is looking at larger phases of life, uh, what planets are connected to them and how it is that you can maximize those larger phases of life. So you can see we have an incredible speaker series this November at synchronicityuniversity.com. You've got just three days left as we start this week to choose your tuition rate. There's always just $5 a class to learn from these brilliant astrologers and so many more. Links are in the description below. And thank you. Thank you so much for this moment with you. Thank you for your trust. I'm so grateful for it. Um, I'm still in Argentina. That's why I'm wearing this t-shirt. And I am heading this week to Monte Video. That is the plan. Uh, so if you are in Uruguay, let me know that as well. If you happen to be there, I'm always happy to meet uh, for hugs. Earlier this week, I met up with Maria Blaquier and her husband. They took me for dinner. Uh, they are based here. Uh, and it was just so lovely to connect in person uh, and to have that moment and just to continue to marvel at what a brilliant astrologer she is. She just knows so much. Absolutely uh, worth checking out her class. Uh, but of course, I miss my other friends. Like I miss hanging out with Yuridia. Uh, I used to hang out with her in Mexico City all the time when I lived there. Uh, I miss hanging out uh, also with Mark. I mean, my God, his insights have helped me to see my chart and the things that I have gone through or maybe coming up so differently. And I literally will like remember his advice when I start freaking out about something. Don't freak out about anything. Now, I'm going to tell you not to freak out about anything, but I get the impulse at the same time. And so I'm really grateful that I have uh, the wisdom of Mark Lawrenson to remind me, don't freak out because whatever it is, it'll get you somewhere really good. That's certainly been the case before. Yeah, big, big transits coming up to look forward to for the collective and, of course, in our individual journeys as well. I'm so grateful for you. I'm so grateful that we have this moment, this time, this exchange. Thank you for your trust always. It'll be a great week. Enjoy. Enjoy.